What's up everyone, Thrall's Metal here once again. I'm the Crackneck and I have another collection update for you and this one is pretty sizable. So uh, I pretty much hit up some distros on this one. I have a 10 CDs for 50 bucks thing that I got from Hell's Headbangers, which I thought about doing an unboxing for, but since I already knew what I got, kind of takes away the surprise, so I'm just gonna go over them here. And I also hit up Night Shift merch, which is an awesome distro, a little with like t-shirts and all sorts of cool CDs. They get a lot of stuff from Everlasting Spew, which getting stuff from them, since they're all the way in Italy, it costs a lot just ordering directly from them, but they have a distro here and you should definitely check them out because there's tons of their releases there, as well as a litany of other things that I found because I have no impulse control, like literally zero impulse control. And that's why there's this giant stack of music we're gonna go through. I'm gonna leave links to both Hell's Headbangers and Night Shift in the description as well. So you can go check out their stuff because there's a lot of cool stuff there. And there's some other distros I'm gonna check out in the future because uh, I'm already eyeballing some other stuff. So let's just get this one started because there's a lot here. Peacemaker, Eye of the Storm EP. This came out in 2019 and this is their 14th EP. This man only has a couple of full lengths, but 14 EPs. Holy shit, that's a lot of EPs. Now this features pretty much every member of Haunt, I think, except for one. This is a three-piece doom band slash kind of epic doom. Definitely loads of the heavy metal influence that you hear in Haunt, but again, with like a doomy atmosphere, you get like more of that like St. Vitus, the sword sort of feel mixed in with, you know, all the token big heavy metal harmonies and such. I gotta say, I kind of like his vocals better on this because he's singing a little bit lower and sometimes his high register doesn't really gel with me as much, but this is some pretty solid stuff and this is gonna be fun trying to find all their EPs. I have their full lengths. They're both absolutely amazing. At least the two that I have, I think there's only two. Really solid stuff. This was one I saw immediately in the list for 10 for 50. And I was like, well, I'm gonna grab that because this band's pretty damn awesome. So yeah, if you've ever jammed Beastmaker, definitely check this one out. Check out their full lengths and check out any of their EPs because there's a lot of them. So yeah, check them out. Black Rat. Dread Reverence. This is the third album from these guys. They are a Calgary-based blackened thrash band, but I would say kind of just blackened a lot of things. Now this is another one from the Hell's Headbangers box. Actually, this first run of 10 are from there. And strangely enough, both of these, the one previously too, Beastmaker, also came out on Shadow Kingdom Records. So again, you can get some cool titles there as well. Now this is, again, kind of an interesting blackened, a little bit of everything. These guys, have a lot of thrash to them, but there's a lot of like motorhead D beat. There's a lot of stuff in here that reminds me of like Celtic Frost. I want to say the song Thrall to the Gallows, love the name, that actually sounds like pure Dark Throne. But you get later on in this album, you hear stuff that is like more akin to bands like uh, Hell Ripper or even Midnight. Really good stuff. Production is kind of hit or miss. Sometimes I think there's just too much reverb on stuff, especially I think the snare on here just sounds really echoey. But I liked how they kind of just took that black end atmosphere and applied it to a litany of different styles, not just thrash and that kind of crust punk DB sort of stuff. The song The Sign is almost blackened doom. So yeah, this was a really cool release. I'm glad I snagged this one. I just pretty much took a look at the cover and said, well, they're black and thrash. I love black and thrash and Found myself a nice little gem here. So yeah, I'm definitely looking for more by these guys. And if you like Black and Thrash, definitely check these guys out. Children of Technology, Apocalyptic Compendium. This is a compilation that I picked up. Again, Hell's Headbangers. This is an Italian kind of crust punk thrash speed metal sort of hybrid. These guys are just kind of like strip motorhead worship, but with lots of like speed metal nods and thrash metal nods in there. Pretty much sticks to the D beat all throughout this album. You get a few like kind of groovier moments. Now this is like a collection of, I believe, unreleased material or stuff that just kind of came out on like splits and stuff like that, like non-album stuff. And it kind of feels that way. Like uh, the songs kind of vary in production. I think there might be some live tracks in here, but it's kind of just like goofy fun. I kind of want to check out more by them, at least like an album. I know they have at least a few. They've been around for a little while. I think the early 2000s. And while this band may have pretty much one gear kind of across the board, at least on this compilation, they play it really well and it's a lot of fun. So yeah, if you like Motorhead, Old Slayer, Venom, 
Celtic Frost, maybe, and maybe Celtic Frost is a bit of a reach. Either way, I would say if you like any of those bands, check this out. This was a really fun compilation. It's not super long. Most of the songs are really short, but they're very energetic and fun. And that was pretty much what I was looking for out of this. Yeah, I saw Crossover was kind of listed in there, and that's pretty much enough for me. I'm a crossover slut. So yeah, definitely check these guys out. Horrific, Your Worst Nightmare. This is a re-release on Hell's Headbangers of this one-man act, one album. This is pretty much the Lone Studio release, and this is Slasher Dave, who is the frontman and keyboardist of Acid Witch, I believe, which is a Detroit Death Doom sludge band that's absolutely awesome, loads of horror themes. And you still get this on here, but I think calling it death metal might have been a little misleading. This is more like death and roll. And... It's one man, but I think the drums are all programmed and they don't really sound great. Actually, the production on this is pretty bad and the songs are just kind of goofy. I think that was the intention though, so I can't knock them there because, I mean, you look at the cover, I mean, it's it looks like it's supposed to be kind of self-aware kind of cheese. And, you know, that love of horror movies that is all over Acid Witch is still very much intact on here. But the songs kind of just don't really go anywhere. And admittedly, I kind of just picked this up because I already had nine CDs selected and I needed a tenth to get the deal. And I was like, eh, this one says Death Metal, I'll check it out. And I mean, it's okay. It's campy, fun. It's just kind of missing the songs and the hooks. But, you know, I mean, I'd still say check it out. Again, that's just my opinion. This could be your new favorite thing. I don't know. But I still recommend checking this out because it was still pretty fun. Horrified, Allure of the Fallen. So the third album from this UK blackened death metal slash melodic death metal act slash death doom. It's kind of a hybrid of all those things. This band features members of Cryptic Shift and Live Burial as well, and it's pretty much like kind of an amalgamation of what I just kind of described, those different genres in there. You have loads of melody on here, like it definitely leans more towards a melodic death metal style but it's very doomy and the songs are very long very drawn out sometimes a little too drawn out but for the most part they're really good like kind of like edge of sanity meets paradise lost that sounds pretty good on paper right there really like kind of dry raspy vocals kind of similar to ace fix and i gotta say i like the mix on here it's kind of dan swato ish i don't think it was dan swato that did this this also came out on shadow kingdom as well this is you know again another distro release and it's kind of weird because I got a shirt for these guys, I think in the Metalhead box years ago, and it was like, man, I don't own anything by this band. I'm going to have to eventually listen to them. Saw this one in there and I decided why not check it out. And this is really solid. Kind of slow, more mid-tempo. You do have some faster moments in here, but I think the atmosphere in here is really good. And again, the melody is like, they're very somber, really kind of close to that, you know, Paradise Lost, My Dying Bride style, but very heavy. It doesn't skimp on the heavy at all. It doesn't get too lost in all the melodies. It still knows how to bring some bone crunching riffs. I definitely want to check out more by this band as well. And I strongly recommend checking this one out because it's pretty damn awesome. So check it out. Perdition Temple, The Tempter's Victorious. This is the 2018 reissue on Hell's Headbangers. It's a two disc or two of their 2015 second album. This is a blackened death metal band that features members of Impiety, Malevolent Creation, and Angel Corpse. And the main guitarist in here is the dude from Angel Corpse, and Jesus, this guy's riff structure is absolutely nuts. Very comparable to Mormon Angel, like Circa Alters of Madness, but you add like a really just ugly, frantic black metal side to it. The drum work is absolutely insane. There's, this dude's flying at all times. It's just nuts. Very technical. Very fast, but not bereft of groove. There's really solid hooks in it, but it was honestly the like stranger, more aggressive angular riffs in terms of like the stuff I got into in here. Like this is really badass. And I want to say again, the Metalhead Box pretty much introduced me to these guys because I got a signed picture from the guitarist in here whose name escapes me, dude from Angel Corpse. And I was like, man, I got to check them out. And again, situation presented me on Hell's Headbangers and I got this and I definitely want more because this is just badass. I miss Angel Corpse. Angel Corpse had some really, really wicked albums and this is pretty damn close to it. Maybe a tad faster. I think there was a, like a thrashier edge to Angel Corpse. This is just so goddamn fast. Like it is just a bullet train of songs. But again, loads of fucking hooks in here. Absolutely awesome release. I am definitely a fan and I'm definitely hunting down more Perdition Temple. So if you have not heard these guys, 
check them out because this is absolutely awesome. All right, we got a pair from Pro Fanatica. We have Enemy of Virtue, and we have Thy Kingdom Come, spelled C-U-M. Just want to make sure we're clear on that. This is a Connecticut-based Black and Death Metal act, features ex-members of Incantation, and these are two very different releases, at least in the sense that this is a studio full-length, and this is a reissue of a collection of unreleased songs, demos, live performances, etc. And it is noisy and muddy as hell. Now this reissue is actually all remastered by Joel Grind of Toxic Holocaust and I have to think that he had to really work hard because these are still really really muddy and I imagine the originals were probably maybe a little bit murkier. I haven't listened to them but overall did a pretty solid job and I have to say I kind of like the compilation a little bit more than the album. This is kind of them at their most raw. I kind of like the more demo quality stuff. The live tracks are really good on here. This one, well, first off, the opening track, Rupture Holy Hymen, is more like Rupture My Eardrums because it just starts off with ear bleeding noise for what seems like forever, but I think it's only like a minute or so, but it's a minute too long. This is kind of an odd album. Now, I know their frontman is also their drummer, at least in the studio. And it's just kind of oddly tracked, and unfortunately, it kind of gets stuck in one particular blast beat for a good chunk of this. Now, when it comes down to that odd tracking thing, like sometimes it seems like songs cut out and then restart, but it's the same track. At least there was one track in here that really just kind of threw me off that way. And it gets very repetitive. But, I mean, it still keeps that blackened, evil atmosphere. No one will ever accuse these guys of not sounding evil as hell, because that is exactly it. But I kind of like this a little bit more. And granted, I got a lot more music on this because this is two discs. Now, granted, the second disc isn't as long as the first disc. I think the first disc is 24 tracks. So, yeah, plenty of stuff. But, yeah, definitely check out Pro Fanatica. I like this one, it may take some more getting used to, but yeah, I think this was a little bit more fun to go over. But either way, check out their stuff, it's pure evil, and I like it. So yeah, check it out. Shed the Skin, The Forbidden Arts. This is their most recent album, came out last year. This is a Cleveland-based death metal act featuring current and former members of Ringworm, Incantation, and Sinister. Now. I have their other two releases, actually courtesy of Hell's Headbangers in terms of just like making orders and such. I'm pretty sure I got them all courtesy of uh, the $50 box. But the last one I got, the album before this, which I can't think of the title of it, actually saw them kind of turn more towards melodic death metal, which I was kind of shocked by that. There are still some elements on here, but this is pretty much a return to pure old school death metal. And a lot of this stuff on here reminds me of Early Unleashed. There are quite a few songs that kind of has that, you know, big galloping riff that's on uh, Before the Creation of Time. I absolutely love that song, so I instantly latched onto that. But these songs are way more gritty and tense. I like the more raw sound in terms of like a murkier guitar tone. It just makes it a lot heavier. It's very thrashy, kind of punky, nice low gurgled vocals, but there's some nice high ones peppered in so it doesn't get too stale. This was a solid album. I liked their first one a little bit more than the last one. I think this one's kind of close to the first one. I don't know which one I like more. I mean, they have three albums. I like the fact that they are from Cleveland. That's not too far from me. And this is a solid album. I really dig this one. I think this is definitely the direction I like to hear them keep going in and so the melodic death metal stuff. Because while it was good, it just kind of didn't feel like them, at least as far as the first album was concerned. But yeah, solid album. I'm definitely glad I snagged this one, and I strongly recommend you guys check it out. Venomous Maximus, No Warning. This is the third album from this Texas-based heavy metal slash doom act, and I actually have their two previous albums, and when I saw this, I was like, well, why don't I not like, actually complete this trilogy? And it is kind of a trilogy because I guess they base this on elements like air, water, and light, or fire, light, water, I don't know. Elements. Whatever. But this one is a bit different than the other two. Uh, this one has almost kind of a goth rock feel. Now there's definitely still some like heaviness in terms of like that doom meets heavy metal sound, like kind of like Beast Maker. But the vocals on here, my God, they're pretty damn annoying. They really took a hard shift to like kind of 
gothic crooning, but it kind of turns out like more like muttering. It's very Bajas, but not as cool as Pete Murphy. He lives, oh my God. It's, it's grating after a while. It made this album very difficult to listen to. Now, there's some really cool riffs on here and some pretty cool songwriting, but this vocal performance just kind of drove me nuts because I don't know, like I could see that being peppered in there and having a different style, but I mean, it's almost like a spoken word. It's not even sung really. I don't know. Kind of let down by this one because I do like their other two releases and I think this one kind of took a little bit off the heavier edge too. But again, the music was still pretty decent. Vocals though. And if they're going to be that out front, eh, that, that's just, that just made for a tough listen. So again, this might not be my thing. It could be yours. Definitely check it out on your own. There will, of course, be links for all the music down below. But yeah, this one wasn't for me. Oh well. Slaughter Day. Ancient Death Triumph. It came out last year on FDA Records. This is the band's third album. They're a German death metal band slash kind of death doom. They're a two-band band in the studio. I have been looking forward to this release. I just hadn't got around to getting it. I found it on Amazon. This is a non-Hell's Headbangers or Night Shift order. And, oh, this is, this is really good. Even the opening intro, Decarnation. I generally bitch about intros. This is a very musical intro, and Jesus, it has a hook of a melody right away. Like, Kind of reminds me of the melody that's playing on Blackened before it kicks into high gear, but more doom laden. And this band just knows how to write riffs. There are killer hooks on virtually every song, and it kind of curtails between like more of like a Ace Fix mid tempo to almost kind of Death Doom sound to like big, you know, thrashy gallops and big chuggy parts. In case you hadn't guessed, I really dig this album. The pacing's great. They don't throw too many songs that are too similar back to back. I really love just the overall feel and atmosphere of this. It is just heavier than hell. Even throw in a little bit of punk on the, I think the song Malformed Assimilation. I dug that. And we get a bonus cover on here with uh, a cover of Anvil's Thumbhang, which admittedly, I'm not the biggest fan of Anvil. I like them, and I mean, that documentary kind of made me a fan of just them as people, but musically, I'm eh, not a big fan. But the cover is absolutely excellent. This whole album is absolutely killer. This is just great death metal in general. And if you have not heard this, I strongly recommend checking this out. I got to get some more of their earlier albums. I have, I believe, one of their earlier EPs, actually the EP that preceded this, and I really dug that. Need more. Excellent band, definitely check them out. Bird Flesh, Extreme Graveyard Tornado. That's a hell of an album title. This came out in 2019. It is this band's fifth release. They are a Swedish grind act featuring current and former members of Entrails and General Surgery. And this is flat out ridiculous, thrashy, blackened. I don't know, they're a little bit of everything. They're grind chord hard. 100%, but you get tons of thrashy riffs. It's like a grind version of SOD's Speak English or Die at times. It is self-aware. I believe the band wears like weird masks and moo-moos or pajamas. I don't know, it's ridiculous. There is a lot of stuff that is just sort of squeezed in here that, I don't know, it just works. Like weird samples, sax solo, we're gonna go full bore death metal on this song, black metal on this one, thrash this one. It's pretty much a lot of it, why not? And oh my god, I love it. It's ridiculous. This is one of the most fun grind releases I've picked up in a while. I have known of Bird Flesh for a number of years. I just hadn't picked up any of their albums, and that needs to change. I need the other four because this is absolutely awesome. It is just ridiculous. I mean, we have a song on here called Guacamolestation of the Talk Corpse. <laughs> That's awesome. If you've never heard this band and you're a grind freak like I am, shame on me for not finding this band earlier, but definitely check them out. Oh my God, this is ridiculous fun to listen to. It's short, you know, but it's a grindcore album and all the songs will just continue to pummel you. And yeah, there is legit a sax solo in one of these songs. I can't remember which one, but I was like, what? Either way, check this band out. This was pure fun to listen to. Mortal Wound, Forms of Unreasoning Fear. This is their demo from 2018, re-released on CD by Maggot Stomp in 2019. And by the way, this is 
the start of the night shift stuff with the bird flesh. And this is another gem I found on there. I couldn't find this on Mega Sump's Bandcamp for a while. I guess it was sold out, but luckily they had some copies and I'm so glad I got this. Now this is their demo, but this is a solid sounding demo. These guys are straight up old school death metal, loads and loads of just killer catchy riffs. Like it's kind of in that vein of bands like Two Mold, except maybe with less frantic drumming. And I get a lot of like old Cannibal Corpse vibes, like the Barnes era Cannibal Corpse, at least musically. They even squeeze them some cool samples on here, which I recognize one immediately. I believe it's at the end of Grotesque Head, which is a sample from the movie Platoon, where Charlie Sheen shoots Tom Berenger. I was like, wow, that is one of the most gratifying scenes in the entire movie. Way to, way to nail that one. Just pure 90s death metal glory. I, I love the overall feel on this. And again, it is very well produced. Like everything really cuts through. I think maybe it gets a little muddy in terms of like the bass and the bass tone, but you're gritted to a wall of heavy. So hey, you, chances are you don't care. It's just gritty, awesome, old school death metal. I mean, if you're a fan of like, again, like Tomb Old, Outer Heaven would be a good comparison to. Definitely check this out if you can find it. I don't know if it's gonna show back up on Maggot Psalm or Night Shift, but I would still say if there's a chance they have it on Night Shift. Go get it. It's really good. Check it out. Convocation, Scars Across. This is their 2018 debut album. We actually reviewed their most recent one here, which was a bleak, disturbing listen across the board, and so is this. But I think this one's even better. Now this is a two-man band in the studio. It features their vocalist, who I forget who else he fronts, and then the same multi-instrumentalist that is in Desolate Shrine, which, my God, this guy is wickedly talented. Long, slow, depressive, layered, murky, just bleak sounding songs. Well produced too. I really love the overall sound of this. Loads of just melodies that would be catchy to people that <laughs> like a lot of death metal. But I mean, at the same time, they are very pretty, but this is very depressive. I love the vocal range on here. You get chants, breathy whispers, full-on growls, groans. He really just kind of like checks off everything he could possibly do in terms of making this a creepy vocal performance. I want to see if there's even like some choirs in here or at least like synthesized choirs in here. This is only four tracks, but every track is over 10 minutes long. And yeah, this is definitely a long listen. But I gotta say, like, there's some spots in here that kind of step outside of the usual, like, Funeral Doom sound, because this is a very slow, plotting album. But you get some riffier moments in the song, Ruins of Ourselves, and I have to say the title track, the opening of it, sounds so much like Slayer's 213 on Divine Intervention. It's very, very similar. But, again, as the song goes on, it moves further away from that and just becomes another Funeral Doom opus because this album's absolutely killer. I kind of like it better than the newest one, but that newest one is also really good. And I also got that one, but since we reviewed it, didn't see any point in going over it again. But yeah, this one came out on Everlasting Spew. Again, Night Shift. You get some great releases from those guys. And this is absolutely killer stuff. And I strongly recommend you guys check this one out. Psychroptic, The Isle of Disenchantment. Now this is their 2001 debut, but this is reissued in 2013 on Thanatopsis Records. And this was one of the few I was missing from them and wildly different than where they are now for damn sure. This is almost more technical, brutal death. It kind of has that slam snare and it's more like suffocation worship. Like it really sounds a lot like suffocation. Now this is what their original vocalist, Matt Chalk, which Eh, he's kind of hit or miss. There are some very strange chants and odd growls and then clean vocals on here, which those weren't good. They kind of had like a harmonizing effect. I don't know if he was harmonizing with someone else in the band or just doubled the tracks. Either way, they weren't seeking up and it was just kind of off-putting. Now, riff-wise and song structure-wise, like, it's pretty solid brutal death metal and you know you got Dave Haley in here on drums who's just doing an awesome job but the production here is eh, kind of lacking again it's their first album they're definitely a lot different now I love pretty much all their stuff now like I started listening to them around Observant and I pretty much fell in love with the band sound like I love their interesting syncopated riffage and like how they just just riff you to death like and it's awesome I love that I love all the intricate playing they have 
this is just, you know, kind of an odd start. But it's still not too bad, and I strongly recommend checking it out if you haven't heard it before. All right, we have a pair from Spectral Voice. We have the Necrotic Doom demo from 2015, and we have Necrotic Demos, which also features the Necrotic Doom demo. I may not have known that when I ordered it, but I'm glad I did because this also has stuff from Splits on it. Now this demo is an absolute beast. I'm a huge fan of their debut full length, The Road to Corridors of Unbeing. Jesus. These guys have three members of Blood Incantation in there, which, I mean, those guys are absolutely incredible. And they can do Death Doom incredibly well too, because this is just massive sounding. And for a demo, I don't even know if they cleaned it up or not. They, Probably didn't. I don't know. It sounds murky and filthy as ever, but Jesus, the riffs on here are just absolutely immense. And it sounds really good for a demo too. Like it sounds very full, pretty much perfectly encapsulates their sound, which is just top notch Death Doom. I think these guys are one of the best. Now this one is really interesting because, well, of course I got the demo again on here and they didn't really change anything in terms of like the sound from each one of these CDs when it comes out of the demo it's pretty much the same. I mean, it makes sense. They both came out on Dark Descent or at least were reissued by Dark Descent. Now the split material is what I thought was really interesting because you kind of hear some stuff that is a little bit broader in terms of their sound, like more death metal oriented stuff. They did these splits with, I believe, Blood Incantation, Vastum, Frenolith, and Anhedonist, which I'm not familiar with that band. But there are some songs in here that are a little bit different. I think Peeled Veins is decidedly more death metal, like the Death Doom elements are played down a bit. And the breakdown on Insufferable Minds, which is a bonus track on here, ugh, the, it's the last track and it's one of the heaviest moments I've heard between either one of these and their full length. Absolutely amazing stuff. If you've never heard Spectral Voice, these guys are, again, top tier Death Doom in terms of newer bands. I could sit here and gush about this band for a while despite not having a tremendous amount of releases, but the stuff they put out has been quality. So yeah, definitely check these out. They're both absolutely amazing, and you know, I mean, technically you're gonna get two copies of the same thing, but screw it, get two copies of the same thing. They're both awesome. Check it out. Venomous Skeleton. Drowning in Circles. This is their debut from 2020 on Everlasting Spew Records. This is an Israeli death metal act, and these guys are really good at atmosphere. I have to say, when I was listening to this, I noticed that there were a lot of keys in here, and they're kind of like old church organ keys. And the way this is recorded, being very cavernous, it really adds a lot. And they're only kind of peppered in there. Most of the time you're getting just pummeled with great riffs. They really remind me a lot of Superstition in terms of just really creative riff structure. But when you add in the keys on some of that, it kind of gives it an almost blackened feel, though this band I don't believe is described as black and death metal at all, but I do feel that there's like just a little bit of black metal influence in here that kind of gives it a really good creepy evil feel. And I really enjoyed that aspect. I mean, the riffs, of course, were just flying everywhere, but the overall atmosphere in here was what really drew me in. Solid debut album. I think the only other release they have is a demo, which uh, has not like been circulated on a major label, which I wouldn't mind hearing that because this is absolutely awesome. Strongly recommend this if you're looking for some really interesting old school death metal sound. And I gotta say the album cover looks like a big satanic butthole, but screw it. It's really fucking cool. It draws you in. I like the fact that they didn't put their logo on there or the title. It's just this ominous, creepy cover. I like that. I like to see more bands do that. Definitely check this out, though. It's a super solid debut, and again, old school death metal fans, this is really, really good. Worm, Gloom Lord. This is the second album from this Florida based Death Doom, Funeral Doom band. I don't know, it's, it's kind of a blend between the two. Now this is a reissue on Iron Bonehead, I believe that came out in 2019. This originally came out in 2018. Uh, this is some really interesting stuff and I was kind of caught off guard. The first thing that I kind of caught was it has a more Funeral Doom opening in terms of the first track on here, but I couldn't tell if I was listening to keys or clean guitars and Jesus, these guys love reverb. It is so reverby, especially in the vocals. The vocals are just a flat out echo. Like whatever one word that do growls is bouncing off of every conceivable direction and it's like, screw it, record it. 
it kind of gives it a really cool feel overall, though, I have to say that. Now, going through and listening to this, it honestly kept getting better as it went on. Apparition of Gloom was the one that really caught me off guard with this shredding, beautiful guitar lead on here. Like, this is just absolutely epic. I didn't see this really fitting in their sound because this is all just drenched in just filth and grime, but there are some absolutely killer melodies on here. Now I gotta knock it a little bit on the production because it's just kind of oddly mixed. The guitar tone doesn't scream Death Doom. It kind of screams just 90s death metal. It's a little bit chunky and a little bit kind of like, you know, crispy. It doesn't kind of have that big, like murky Death Doom sound like any of the other like Death Doom stuff, like Spectral Voice. Not like that at all. And then the drums and vocals are very out in front and generally you hear the vocals kind of get buried a little bit more in most Death Doom, or at least in most of the really murky stuff. But overall, this was a really solid listen. I was really kind of caught off guard by a lot of stuff. Like, you know, it kind of stepped outside of a lot of Death Doom tropes, and wow, this is really good. I'm definitely gonna have to check out more by them. So yeah, if you want to hear some Death Doom, Funeral Doom, whatever, murky swampiness, but with some surprises along the way definitely check this out. This was a really, really good release. Wayfair, A Romance with Violence. This is the fourth full length from this band. This came out on Profound Lore last year and I should have listened to it. This features Isaac Folk, the drummer from Blood Incantation, and this is black metal, like atmospheric black metal meets American folk, which is an odd combination, but oh my god, it really works in here. Now, there's been a number of people commenting on our videos saying I should definitely pick this one up, and I've been meaning to. Finally found an opportunity, saw it on Amazon, got it here quickly, and wow, this this is really good. I need to get more of their stuff. I've jammed some of their earlier stuff, but I don't own any of their other albums. This is just interesting how they craft this blend of like dissonant guitars and melodies and atmosphere, and then completely shift gears into what I would call almost like music from a Western, a cold, grim, blackened Western. Like, you know, it gets cold and grim on the plains. Sure, it's not Norway, but close, it'll do. It's those inclusions of those moments and how they blend in and how they transition, especially on the last track, Vaudeville, which, I mean, yeah, that screams folky as hell. How it moves from like a flat out sort of folk-like beginning into a full-on black metal epic is just really interesting how they do that. It's marvelous. The heavier moments in here definitely remind me a lot of Agaloc, which I was a huge fan of those guys. And I mean, I don't know if they're ever gonna get back together. I'd like to think they'd get back together, but eh. And it also reminded me a lot of Huntsman's first album, which they included a lot of American folk stuff in here. This is really excellent. This could have been on my year-end list last year if I had listened to it. I don't know, I can't really say because I like a lot of the stuff on that list, but this is really killer stuff. And thank you to the number of people that recommended it to me. I know there's one in particular, and I can't think of your name, and you definitely brought him up a couple of times, but you weren't alone, and well, you all were right. It's awesome, I should have got it last year, but I got it now, and I'm so glad I did. For all of you that haven't checked this out though, definitely check it out, they were all right. I just didn't get it. That's me. Check it out, it's good stuff. All right, well that knocks out a really, really big collection update and uh, man, be warmed. I'm, I'm already looking at another distro in terms of like weird underground releases and uh, impulse control, it's terrible. That's why I don't have it. So I'm just gonna pretty much get that stuff and I will be back with more stuff that I purchased and probably some shirts too, why not? Either way, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. Also, once again, make sure to check out our giveaway going on right now once we hit 4,500 subs, which we have eclipsed 4,400 and are on our way to that 45. We'll be giving away one vinyl and three CDs and we're really looking forward to giving that away because, I mean, thank you guys. You guys have kind of like launched this up there and we are super appreciative and that's why we want to just keep throwing cool content your way, let you know how much cool music's out there or at least our opinions on it or just bore you with our opinions. Either way, you guys seem to like watching it and we really appreciate that so thank you very much. There will be a link in the description below as well for that giveaway though. So with that, I thank you very much and we will catch you later.